The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Lesson 68 of your Distance Learning Session for Georgi Upper Six Science with Kenneth Yosimbom. During Lesson 67, we had an assignment. That assignment required that we should draw cross-section of faulted and intruded strata. So this map was provided and we shall now proceed to correct the assignment. This is our map and we are given this map to answer the following questions. Name the different intrusions visible on the map to draw a cross-section along section A to B and then C to D and then we add a key or make a key. If we go back to our map, you will realize that this is an intrusion. This is a linear structure. And this intrusion, if you look at it, it is only on the sandstone bed or on the uh, diorite. This is diorite. So diorite is a major intrusion because it's plutonic. And then this should be a seal because it is, you have uplight. Either it's a seal or it's what? A vein. And then you have, this is uh, um, a dike. We may not really conclude that it's a dike because it's not getting across, but it is lying, dis lying discordantly on the dolerite. right. Then, so we have uh, dolerite, right, we have uh, uh, sandstones, we have shale, and then we have uh, diorite. So, an uplight. Diorite, uplight, uh, dolerite indicates igneous information in the area. So, to answer the first question, name the different intrusions visible on the map. First, we have diorite. And diorite is a plutonic rock, so it, in, it, in, it uh, indicates batholite, which is a major intrusion. We have uplight and diorite. Which are all accrobing only on the uh, upper, uh, upper uplight and dolerite, which are all accrobing only on the batholit. So we consider that they are all seals because they are not cutting across other beds or they are not going out of the batholit. Now we're going to proceed to draw a cross section along A and B and then C and D. For A and B, that is the way we place our paper strip. So this is uh, our paper strip. We plot out, this is the battle lead. It's battle lead, so we plot out so that we come up with an overturn or a turn boot. And then this is our seal. And then that is a fault plane. So that way, this is what we'll obtain as the cross section along the line A to B. This is the fault plane. This is the intrusion. This is our battle lead, the major intrusion in the area. 
and there we have shown displacement along the fourth plane. The next was a section along the line C and D. So this is C and D. And along C and D again, we have our battleheads. We have these two intrusions now cutting, uh, uh, going through the section line. So that way, this is how the paper strip is supposed to be put. This, the red is our uh, fault. And then these are intrusions. So this is what we will obtain. That is the way the paper, the map is supposed to be drawn out, and the section line will represent something this way. So that is the correction of our assignment. Remember that for each cross section, the direction of the north, this small box indicating how the section line has been gotten from the map, and then the section a scale and a title. Very important. Now we are still on map work and under the subtopic interpretation of geological features on maps. We saw different types of maps right up to strike lines, three point problems and we have seen geological history. We we'll continue to interpret the Geolo the geological structures on maps as we look at cross section so our lesson today will be on cross sections uh, geological cross section six where we will concentrate to draw cross sections of lava flows conformable uh, uh, strata as well as unconformable strata and also surface deposits now, in our lesson, we'll look at objectives, see the prerequisites, real-life situation. Then we'll have some uh, learning activities, have some exercises, and we'll end our lesson with an assignment. Now, at the end of our lesson, we will be able to draw topographic and geological sections of lava flows. Conformable strata as well as unconformable strata and then surface deposits. Here we will concentrate more on conformable strata because if we understand how strata conform, we will understand equally how the we will understand the irregularities that may come in. So information that is very vital in order for us to understand the uh, criteria for drawing. Geological cross sections of lava flows, conformable strata, and surface deposits include the fact that we need effective knowledge on denudational geology, on petrology, on structural geology, and on historical geology. Now, look at these photos. You have A representing a beach, then B representing um, uh, a fracture. Then C, representing stratification. Then D, representing an unconformity. We look at here, there is destruction. And then here, there is no destruction. So this is a conforming contact. Now, a geologist collects petrographic and structural data at different localities in the field. At each sampling point, he notes the coordinates, the name of the locality, and takes a photo of the essential feature. Now, which method of data presentation will easily reveal the relationship between the rocks and the structures of the different localities that were collected by the geologists? during field work. Can histogra uh, histograms and cumulative frequency curves do that relationship? Will stelograms be able to do it or it can be done using geological maps? As we go through our lesson, we will discover which of the methods is possible to reveal the relationship between structures and rocks. 
Now, we shall observe map 15 and deduce striking elements of that map. As you observe, take note that there is visible displacement and that along this visible displacement there is distraction. This bed ends in a way that is uh, uh, indicating irregularity and then you also find out that contour lines are crossing bed boundaries. So, the striking elements will include the fact that contour lines cross bed boundaries, indicating that the area is inclined. Inclined areas will equally prove the fact that the geology is not the way it has been laid down. There are irregularities. Then, there is regular repetition of beds and the visible displacement of strata, indicating that the area has been affected by tectonic activities. So we don't expect the geology to be horizontal again. So inclined beds and uh, tectonic effects suggest deep and regular train of beds on level ground that guides us to a lesson on cross sections of lava flows and unconformable or unconformities. Now, note should be taken that um, lava flows are indicated on maps by volcanic rocks. If you see basalt, if you see rhyolite, if you see obsidian, if you see peach stone, if you see scoria, if you see pumice, if you also see andesites or trachytes, that is, those are indications of lava flows. All volcanic rocks on maps will indicate lava flows. Uh, uh, Extrusive uh, features, again, can also be indicated uh, by the presence of what? Pyroclasts. That is when we see pyroclastic materials, it, uh, it no should be taken that there are uh, igneous information that is occurring on the surface and it is volcanic. Then, some beds may lie unconformably on others, so uh, indicating presence of what? Unconformities. So, what are the steps to use in drawing such cross sections? The first step is use a strip of paper to mark the surface out, uh, the surface outcrops of the lava flow and the unconformity. It means that to draw cross-sections of unconformities and lava flows, we have the same steps. Now, the next thing, work out what rocks and the structures are buried beneath. Very important. Know that with unconformities or lava flows, they could be lying on other beds. So, that way you work out the structures that are, uh, uh, that are buried by the unconformity or by the lava flow. Then, redraw the map as, as it would look without the what? Lava flow and the unconformity rocks lifted off. Now, cut a new paper strip. Map the buried uh, boundaries where they cross the section line. That is, very important. We illustrate it. If you go, come to a map and you see information like this. If you see information like this on a map. And then somewhere you have the line of section. Let's say this is A and this is B. Now. This other bed, let's put a map, uh, a cross map on it, indicating that it is lying horizontally, and that this other bed, A, B, A, B, C, D, E, F, are inclined. So, what we are saying is that the first thing that you should do, you should come here and map out the, where there is the plane of unconformity. When you map out, you come to your profile and if this is how the area is, uh, this is our profile, this is point A, this is point B, then you map out the unconformity here. 
then we draw a horizontal line first so that this bed is at the top. This bed with the cross, let's say it is bed G. So this is uh, G at the top. Now, it means that G is covering some beds. Then you now come back, you get another strip of paper, and you now put along this line now. But what information you should do is that you should now extrapolate these beds that were hidden by bed uh, G. You now extrapolate them to touch the line of section. You can redraw them even above the line of section. Then you put now your paper strip and redraw and mark out the information as it crosses the line of section. Then you can come here now and plot to know how the beds are given. It will be information like this. That would be the cross section. Now we we'll go to examples. Example one that is the map for unconformities. Now, if you look at this map, if you come to this bed, this bed, you will realize that this bed has a different dip. The dip is about 85. So, and this bed does not have a dip. So, this is a horizontal bed and this is an inclined bed. So, this is a plane of unconformity. Then, here again, you realize that this bed is dipping at 60. And this one is dipping at uh, uh, 85. So they also have different dip, dips, indicating that this uh, the bed boundary here is a plane of unconformity. This bed and this bed again, this bed is dipping at 20 and this one is dipping at 60. So here there is another plane of unconformity. Here you don't need to be drawing the information because no bed is lying on the other. All the beds are inclined and folded. So you come now, you come to where you have the plane of unconformity plot. You come here, you plot, and you come here and you plot. Then you maintain the dips using you, you measure the dips using a protractor to have the planes of unconformity. So here on our profile, this is a plane of unconformity. This is a plane of unconformity. This is also another plane of unconformity. And we are done. This is also a plane of unconformity. That is the way to draw unconformities on the map. Very easy to go by. Then next example. Next example now is lava flow and an unconformity. If you look at here, this is a bed with a cross, another bed with a cross, meaning that they are lying horizontally. Then you have now these beds that are lying horizontally, they are lying on beds that are dipping. So this is a plane of unconformity. Then this way you have lava flow. This is a lava flow. And maybe all these bees will represent basalt. So it is uh, a lava flow that is basaltic in composition. Then our line of section is from A to B. A to B. So that way we go now. That is the way we place our paper strip. First thing first to do, we draw out our, if we draw out our unconformity, you will realize that this bed, this bed and this bed are lying on this section of the strata. So, we pick that out first before we are plotting information for the other bed. The same for lava flow. When you do that correctly, you will realize that this bed and this bed. This bed is lying on the other bed. Why the whole of this bed is lying on this portion of the strata? Then this is our lava flow also lying on the portion of the strata. That is the way you get the profile. The rest is for a fold. You know how to draw cross sections of folds. So the essential for now was to prove, was to guide you how to draw uh, and, uh, a profile of unconformity and lava flow. Now, the next is cross sections of surface deposits. Surface deposits are they equally lie on materials, and when they are lying on folded materials, they are worked out the same way like unconformities and lava flow. So the first thing is that. Uh, 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 surface deposits are indicated on maps by loose sediment. If you have alluvium, 
if you have uh, dunes, if you have debris, if you have boulder clays, they indicate, you call it tilts, they will indicate loose materials or surface deposits. Now, the steps of how to draw a cross section. First step, use a strip of paper to mark the surface outcrops of the surface deposits only. Then, work out what rocks and structures are buried beneath. The same way you worked out for uh, unconformities and lava flow, you do it the same because surface deposits are lined. They could be lined on, uh, they could be burying some rocks beneath. Now, redraw the map as it would look without the what? The lava flow, the unconformity, as well as the what? The surface deposit. Then, cut a new paper strip. Mark the buried uh, boundaries where they cross the section line. You do the same thing like this map. Perhaps this is surface, these are surface deposits. It goes the same way just like for unconformities and lava flows. Then we have an example. In our example, we have, this is our map. In our map, these are surface deposits. How do we know? This is a river. And this river will indicate that the materials that will be deposited by a river will automatically be alluvium. So it is a map showing surface deposits that are called alluvium or river loot. We have our line of section A to B. So we draw out the line of section. This is how the paper strip will look like. Remember that the area is folded and our interest is the area where there are surface deposits. Remember that a river will flow in a valley and a valley will appear like as if it is a sink, a sink form. So, that is how our profile will look like. This is where we have the river and this is our, these are our surface deposits covering part of the strata or part of the succession. We have uh, the way the section has been taken from the line, uh, from the map, then we have our scale. So that is the cross section along line A to B. This way, we have been able to see how to draw cross sections of uh, lava flows, unconformities, and surface deposits. So recall that lava flows are indicated on maps by volcanic rocks. Then, some beds may lie unconformably on, some beds may lie unconformably on other beds. And the fact that surface deposits are indicated on maps by loose sediments. Now, in drawing sections of lava flows, unconformities and surface deposits, we take note, use a strip of paper to map their surface out, to map out their surfaces or how they are cropped on the map and then work out uh, what rocks and structures are buried beneath by extending the map boundaries of the other rocks across the line of section. Now, redraw the map as it would look without the lava flow and the unconformity rocks as well as the surface deposits. So, when you, it will be like as if you have removed the unconformity, the lava flow, before you are redrawing now. Then you cut a new sheet of paper and then make the buried, uh, the buried boundaries where, or mark the buried boundaries where they cross the section line. So, we will move to an uh, exercise. Before we get to an exercise, remember that to relate rocks and structures gotten in the field by our geologists. We can only use a map. Only a geological map can reveal that information. A histogram will not do. A cumulative frequency curve will not do. A stereogram will not do. So, in our exercise, we have a map. And on this map, we have uh, a line of section x to y then we have this bed with this our 
cross on it. So this indicates that this bed is lying horizontally and it is limestone and ash. Then we have a dike and we have beds that are inclined in one direction because the deep arrows are towards one direction and they are all 45. So from that map, what is the significance of A, the cross mark on one of the beds? B, the significance of the arrows. Then C, trace out on the map the plane of unconformity. Then C, uh, 3, draw a section along line X to Y and make a key. So the first thing first, if we get back to our map, we will realize that this is the map. This cross represents a horizontal strata. That is a bed that has not been affected by tectonic activities. So it's lying horizontally on other beds. You see that this bed and this bed, they are like a, a sheet of paper that has been thrown. Just like this case. It's like a sheet of paper that is thrown on the other bed. Then, um, uh, uh, the arrows will indicate deep directions. Then, for us to trace out there uh, uh, on the map the, the plane of unconformity. This is our map. Let's come back to the map. So our plane of unconformity will go through like this, along this contact. That is the trace for the unconformity. Then to draw our cross-section now, that is how we are going to put our paper strip. And when we put our paper strip, the first thing first, we mark, we map out this. Then we map this and map this. Then we draw now this horizontal line is for this bed. So this is the bed that is lying on the other bed, and then this is the limestone bed. So the limestone bed is the youngest bed in that locality. And then you now extrapolate. You extrapolate this bed, extrapolate this to come to the line of section so that you can pick it here and then you draw. You also extrapolate the dike to come to the line of section, then you draw it and you can now have your cross section. So that is the section along line X to Y. Now, assignment. In our assignment, we are going to use this map. And on that map, we have different structures. We have folds, we have a fold, but there is concern. A concern is lava flows and then unconformities and surface deposits. If you look at that map, you will already be revealing the different structures that are there. So you use that map. From the map, name the different structures visible on the map. Then two, draw a cross section along the section A, the section line A, B, and Y, Z, and make a key. So in this case, we are drawing two cross sections. You can use geology for advanced level, and it will assist you to do your assignment as well as understand our lessons on drawing cross sections of uh, lava flows, unconformities, and surface deposits. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will still be on geological cross section seven, but we will concentrate on general cross sections now because we will come to now pick a map that covers all the geological structures. That is what we mean, general geology sections. See you in our next class. <laughs> On a terre minga, ma terre nyum, on a terre majang, ma terre ndom, mane tambia ninya ne injo biayen, ngani bana, ma terre mot, ngani la kiri wa terre ndom, eseki na bia dinki do, mane tambia ninya ne injo biayen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injo biayen